So you know how Apex validations will block you from processing and advancing. Well, what if instead of a blocking validation, you wanted more of a warning, something that if you trust the user or if if you want to allow it, you you want the user to acknowledge that they can proceed. Here's an example that I, um, I'm going to use to show you this. Let's say we have assignees and they have to-do items assigned to them. And if I click the delete button, I get my usual prompt and I'm going to get this error that I've defined where you can't delete an assignee while there are to-dos present. Well, what if you want to allow that? What if it's okay to click delete as long as they know what's going to happen that the, those records are going to be deleted? Well, let's make that happen. I'm going to edit the page. So the first thing that we see here, we have a very standard page with our form, with our items. We have one validation and we're calling it prevent delete. And we're simply saying if there are no rows returned from the to-do table, um, if there are no rows returned, we're going to proceed. But if there are any rows in the to-do, that means uh, we, we don't want to allow the assignee to uh, proceed. Well, the, the technique is very simple. Even though I'm using Apex 20.1 for this example, this technique goes back to all versions of Apex. It doesn't matter what version you use and you'll be able to use this. It turns out you can have some HTML here. So what if, what if we added something like an, a link that allows us to bypass? So I'm going to say JavaScript apex.submit and I'm going to submit with something like uh, force delete. Now this is not going to work yet but it's going to help me demonstrate what I want to allow. What if we say instead of this error we say there are let's say there are to-dos. There are still to-dos assigned. There will be deleted if you proceed. And we're going to say, OK, delete. Okay, there you go. So what this is, is we're going to have this link that says, OK, delete. So let's see how this looks. We're going to click the delete button again. And we get our message and we get the OK, delete. So now if I click that button, actually the page will submit and it will submit with the value that I specified as a request. Now, my rows do not get deleted yet. And that is correct. That is uh, because force delete is not one of those values that would that would perform a delete operation by my process assignee. Now we can get around that by using a request that still means delete. For example, drop. So what happens is this validation will only perform when we have a delete uh, request. The automatic row processing will delete when it sees a request of drop and it will delete with the request of delete. So let's see how that looks. So I'm going to click delete. If I hover over that, you can see in the bottom over here, you can see how there's a drop. And if I inspect it, we'll see, we'll see the HTML for that, right? We see here the drop. So let's see what happens. I'm going to click that. And my record for August 
we actually get an error, but let's understand what that error is. It's no data found. And that no data found is when we initialize the form. So what actually is going on, I'm going to close this and I was looking at this record. And if I click go to refresh, that record's gone. And what's going on is it's actually getting deleted, but then the form reloads with the same ID and that ID is now gone. So why is that? That is because my close dialog by default is only closing when we create, save, or delete. So if I add the drop here, let's go to a new record for Carlota. I edit, I look at my records, I click delete. Okay, delete, it says, oh, you still have records. They'll be deleted if you proceed. I click OK, delete, then they're gone. So that is the workaround for this process. I and mean, you can see how there's a few ideas on how you can do this. Now, let's make this look a little bit better. Another thing I like to do is to use, go to the Universal Theme Sample app, which you could actually install if you want it. Go into um, Reference, and we can build a button. We can go into the button builder and my button will actually say something like yes delete and we'll have a wooden icon and my icon will, will be I happen to know by memory that I want a trash can but I'm, I want my button on the right and I want it to look uh, like danger, but simple. It turns red when I hover. Now, what I've done here building the button is I've gotten all these classes. And what I want is these lists of classes because I'm using a link. So I'm going to go back to my error messages, error message here on the validation. And this link that we've built, I'm going to add class. Actually, I already have that on my clipboard. So class and all these classes. So this will style it as a button with an icon. Um, danger, simple, and the icon on the right. Now, I'm missing the icon. So let's go grab, including the span. I'm going to grab this portion for my icon. Go back here to my page and I paste that. I click OK. And if I done things correctly, now when I edit a new row and I click delete, we're going to get a message that, um, well, you may have seen that maybe I messed up <laughs> part of the HTML. So it's almost looking correctly. Let's see what happened. Uh, I'm following this. This is fine. Oh, there you can see it. The span um, was not open correctly, right? I'm going to head and save it. I'm just going to click delete again and it's going to reload. There it is. So now I have my delete button. So there are still to do's assigned. There will, oh, not there. They will be deleted. This is live coding. They will be deleted if you proceed. You get the idea. Here, I'll just click the delete again to force that. OK. They will be deleted if you proceed. OK, delete. And then they're gone. I want to add that I did not explain that my table definition, which I'll show right here, has a undelete cascade. So the reason my to-dos are being deleted automatically when the assignee is deleted is because of this constraint. I could have, or we could have had, or you may have a situation where you don't have this and you would need a pre-process. In that case, for example, you would have something like, you would create a process that would be 
something like delete children and it would be pills equal code and we still would do delete from to do's where signee id is equal to p3 id which is the assignee we're seeing and we would assign this to guess what we don't have a button name drop so what you would do is you would select a request value of drop this would mean that whenever we go ahead with the drop we delete the children by this delete or you execute whatever you need to do for your override situation and then you go with your automatic role processing and that's it i hope this helps you with optional validations or validations that you can override